The following scary stories are curated from Reddit. I hope you will enjoy our narration and subscribe. My wife kept seeing things. Gruesome things like my son and daughter's mangled bodies lying on the floor. The first time it happened, I nearly died. I was under the truck changing oil when I heard an ungodly shriek. I almost knocked myself out trying to climb out of there. When I got inside, she was lying on the floor, cradling the dog. She squeezed the poor thing so hard that she broke its neck. She was convinced it was our daughter, Jane. She said she was trying to stop the bleeding. The thought of something happening to Jane freaked me out so much, I had to give her a call just to make sure she was okay. I thought talking to her might help my wife, but it only made things worse. She said it couldn't be Jane because Jane was dead and tried to strangle me with the phone wire. Then she started seeing Darren, my son, around the house with his head hanging off. Unlike Jane, he lived close by, so he was able to come over and talk to her, but it didn't do any good. She was too far gone. I tried all kinds of medication, but nothing worked. Eventually, the kids wanted to lock her up in some home, but I couldn't. She wouldn't last in a place like that. To be honest, I couldn't imagine my life without her. We've been together for almost 40 years. I really believed I could handle things, but she started to become more and more violent. Until one night, she attacked our grandchildren with a knife. She said it didn't matter that they were already dead when we asked her why she did it. Even though the wounds were only superficial, Darren demanded she get sent away. I knew I couldn't fight him anymore, so I just asked for one more night to say goodbye. I wanted to make sure our last night together was special, so I recreated our first date. I couldn't take her out for burgers, so I ordered in and made the kitchen up to look like the dinner we went to. Then I set up a projector behind the barn so we could watch a movie in the car like we were at the drive-thru. I think that must have triggered something in her head because halfway through she turned to me and said, I know things aren't getting any better, so I want you to help me end it here tonight while I still have a glimpse of who I used to be. It tore me up inside, but I knew I had to do it. So later that night, while she was sleeping, I shot her in the back of the head. Too cowardly to use the gun on myself, I took some of her medication to help steady my nerves. Soon after, I saw the bodies, and the memories of what I did came in flooding back. Kayla, Kayla, please say something, baby. Anything. Tell me you hate me. Tell me I'm trash. Tell me you never should have married me. Just say something. I need to hear your voice, sweetheart. Don't you think you've punished me enough? My wife continued to lay there, motionless, her glassy-eyed stare fixed to the wall. She's been like that for three days. I know I messed up. I'm really in the doghouse this time. But this seems like overkill. I will admit the fight was pretty nasty. We've had our fair share of arguments, but this is the first time that things have turned physical. I never should have laid my hands on her. I was too rough. So, in retaliation, my wife hasn't spoken a word to me. Not one single word in three entire days. She just stares blankly at the wall, unblinking. All to get back at me. I've been the one feeding her. I know she's parched as the desert and hungrier than a growing teenage boy, but she won't eat or drink. The food just dribbles down her chin. So I've taken that upon myself too. I chew her food for her so it goes down easier. I know it's gross, but if she won't eat willingly, it's what must be done. Speaking of gross, Kayla is starting to reek. I've given her a sponge bath, but after three days without a shower, it's starting to become unbearable. It might be coming from her private area, but that is a line I refuse to cross. I tried FaceTiming Kayla's best friend around half an hour ago. I thought that maybe she'd be able to help her get out of this funk. 
Well, once I showed Allie what my wife has been up to recently, her face drained of color. She looked really concerned about Kayla. It honestly frightened me a bit. Then she abruptly ended the call. Must have been the internet connection. It's not the best out here in the boonies. The strange thing is, when I tried to call back, my number was blocked. Weird. Someone's knocking on the door now. They're saying they're the cops. Honestly, I'm glad. Maybe they can help me get my screwed up family situation resolved. I really hope they can because it's not just my wife. Yesterday, my six month old daughter started giving me the silent treatment too. Ever since age six, I've attended church. My parents have always been staunch Christians. No sex until marriage, no porn, you know the drill. We attended Seaford Church. It was a little church in the relatively small city of Seaford, New York. My family and I loved this church, great people. Things went south one day when I noticed some advertisements set up on the streets about a family get-together and eating and chatting at the park. A week later, I attended the event. I noticed everyone appeared to be having a good time. However, I had to go to the bathroom. I was standing outside a porta potty when I overheard the man inside presumably whispering to a man on the phone. This guy actually thinks we're a Christian community, followed by a nasal laugh. What time is the ritual tonight? Followed by a four second pause. Okay, are you gonna perform your magic? What, I thought? This guy doesn't belong here. Of course we're a Christian community. I hadn't realized, but I looked behind me to see everyone missing. I made my way to the parking lot. I'm not joking when I say this, but the cars were aligned just like a pentagram. This absolutely freaked me out and I booked it out of there. Today comes around and I attend church. When I opened the door, I swear I heard, Hail Satan, oh hail Satan, hail almighty Satan. But not even a second later, they started talking about the Bible. I feel like this place is faking me. Am I being deceived by the image that this place is a great Christian community, when in reality, it's satanic?